going to do, we're going to animate a four aspect color light signal using a PIC microcontroller. In this case, the PICAX PIC AXE microcontroller. This is a microcontroller board here. This is a large one, it has several inputs and several outputs on this. We'll go into this later in the video. You can order that online, you can order the chips online. As with all microchips, you should use an insertion tool. But these are reasonably hardened against electrostatic precautions, but an electrostatic wrist strap and a removal tool and insertion tool slightly different again um, and what we're going to do we're going to program this microcontroller you'll see this in a minute and this is going to be run off using a usb power supply i've got a couple of them handy it's four and a half volts five volts that runs the actual microcontroller we'll go into that in a minute and on our board we have a three and a half mil audio jack connection which goes to our laptop we have an adapter there so there's either a serial connector or there is a uh, USB connector. And again, the program you'll see later actually tells you which port it's on in case you get it wrong. So it actually helps you out there. The program helps you out quite a lot. Even if you get the chip wrong, it'll tell you you've got the wrong chip. This is the chip you've got in and you need to set your software for that. And it goes through all the options. And this is connected to our output relays. Um, You'll hear me in the video mention that I have wired these up to a four and a half. Yes, they will run at four and a half, but really this needs a 12 volt supply. Um, again, I've got some old power supplies that are going to run this, old laptop power supplies, 12 to 19 volts, will run this quite happily. So the PIC chip runs off the four and a half volt USB um, power supply and the interface relays run off a 12 to 19 volt um, charger that I've got hanging around and you can get these again in two four and they will go up to eight fairly simple to wire up they tell you the channels that come in so here you can see channel one to channel four the negative and the positive the ground and the vdd and again that's where you would put your 12 volt supply in there and then your channel inputs would match to your outputs on your chip so in this case i've soldered uh, output one goes to output one on here i could have put output zero to there but just to save confusion output one to channel one output two to channel two and so on and so on and so on um on this we have 20 inputs in two pairs and 20 outputs this was running a, a block um, bell uh, many moons ago about 10 years ago you, so this is our finished control box, still a little bit tidying up inside to do. What we have is our incoming cables, which are treated into these larger terminals. These are your um, interface relays from the chip, which is just down here in its own little box down there, to the actual circuit board. And what we have inside here, some telltale lights that tell us the relays are turned on. They have a small amount of residual voltage in them to tell you they're actually live off the uh, the inputs. These are your channels. So channel 1, red, 2, yellow, 3, green, uh, 4, double yellow. And it mentions it there. And then you have your positive and your negative 12 volt feed to your relays, your interface relays. I've simply commoned up all the negatives, go to the lamp, and then these are your uh, main feeds to the lamps the red yellow green and double yellow and they go on to the actual uh, common on the lamps so you can still actually have the uh, the pole change on the uh, on the lamps if you want to film drop out sorry you can have the auxiliary filament drop in as well still so i can still keep that and down here on your chip you just have a telltale light to tell you the power's on for the chip there problems with the chip if you're not very careful they've got to keep them in a very dry environment the chips, the slightest touch of your finger trips the chip off and it starts cycling through all different sequences. Uh, so it's got to be kept in its own little little space, hence why it's down there. Um, the incoming cables are just treated in here, as I mentioned, and I just have a, a, a kill switch and on off kill switch here, just to turn it off so you don't have to keep going in and out of this box. And this will be sealed up inside this box when I'm done. Uh, power supplies for the chip, four and a half volt USB power supply, standard phone charger power supply that I've got loads of phone chargers from old phones and 12 volts for the power relays for the um, interface relays that's just simply an old uh, laptop charger at 12 volts well, 12 to 19 volts which gives plenty for the uh, lamps and the relay because you've got to drive the relays and you've got to drive the lamps in the signal as well so 19 volts output's not too bad for that um, the changeover relays do take a good few amps on these and like i say these kits um, you can purchase off the internet so you can purchase the interface relays, you can purchase the chips, purchase the chip bases. Um, this is a pickaxe preset 
um, chip. It comes with its, its own little regulator on board, etc. Uh, and protection software. So that's all there, pre-built. And I've just stuck that in a little pot box in the bottom there. Everything else is just floating free at the moment, so I've got nothing moving around. This is going to be screwed to the back of the table, on the display table, which we've got. That's a display table there, nice big wooden display table. Inside our signals, what we've done, because there wasn't much room to rewire this, and I didn't really want to take the old wiring out, I wanted to keep the old wiring in. What I've done is I've taken the 110 volt um, completely out, and that, um, with the main and the auxiliary wires, I've used to feed the lights itself. So they're actually using the internal wires that were already there inside the lights. This is only ever going to be a display signal. So they're never going to be used as such again. But should they ever need to be, the wires can go straight back on. So to facilitate that, I've just dropped a little terminal block into each of the aspects. And that just holds all the wires there. So... Uh, it's on single yellow at the moment. If we let it just cycle up to a double yellow, I can show you the lamp changeover still works. So you can see the lamp changeover still works. We can still use that if we need to. So everything still cycles through in there as, it, as is needed. Right, so this is the actual programming uh, little emulator. And what we have, when you start up, it will give you an option to actually put in which type of chip it is. That details are on the data sheets you can download. But also, if you get the wrong chip anyway, it will tell you you got the wrong chip. And it will tell you which the right chip is, and it will tell you to change that. So you can't get that wrong. Um, I have gone for this option here, the flowchart, which is the easy one. You can type in in basic if you really want on syntax. Um, but this just does this, the same job. This is an emulator, so it will take the commands, convert that into basic, convert that into a language that the chip understands. Now, as you can see on my program here, what I have is the start. I've put in a output box, so I've told pin 2 to go high to turn itself on, then to wait 10 seconds, and then to go low on pin 2 and turn itself off. And as you can see, it's at this stage at the moment in the programming, because I've told it to work. And then it waits one second and goes back to the start. Once you've programmed your um, program in, and you've got all these options up here, so my delay here, this wait command is here in the delay, and there's several other ones in there as well. My outputs and inputs are all there. So to turn the chips on and off, turn the pins on and off. And you've also got inputs for switches, etc. And those are in the if boxes there. You can then, when you finish, click simulate. Simulate puts this mimic up off the chip. Now, as you can see at the moment, it's in the waiting phase after having turned the pin on, which is this pin here, high on number two, as you can see. It's now waiting the 10 seconds, and then it will turn pin 2 off. These are the simulations for your inputs, so your input pins and also your output pins and it gives you a lot of information about that as well and there's other things you can do on there as well and that's basically uh, the program. Once you're done you just click program up here and if there's a chip connected it will tell you you've got the right chip or the wrong chip and to change the chip. Um, details on the screen and it will download it, it takes a few seconds and it's done and that's the emulator, as simple as that.